So let's get to some more news happening. Uh, we reported uh, yesterday that uh, Israel withdrew most of their forces from the Gaza Strip. And we have information coming out that Netanyahu said that this was just a tactical withdrawal that they have set a date for the ground invasion of Rafa. So we thought there was going to be a pause in the fighting in Israel in the Gaza Strip, but that does not look like it's going to happen. It looks like that um, there will be a new invasion of Rafa. They withdrew a, a bunch of brigades, and they have uh, are going to redeploy them uh, back into the Gaza Strip. So Benjamin Netanyahu, the leader of Russia, uh, has stated that the invasion will take place. The Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, announced today, Monday, that the Israeli army has set a specific date for a ground invasion of the city of Rafa. He went on to say that he had received a detailed briefing on the talks in Cairo. We are working to achieve our goals all the time, Netanyahu said primarily, releasing all of our hostages and achieving a total victory over Hamas. Um, so they have set a date for a new ground invasion. I guess the war in Israel is not over. We got a lot of information coming in. Before we get to that information, I just want to show you price of gold is going uh, through uh, to the moon, folks. It's $2,340. Um, it has risen the last 30 days, $162. And for the year to date, gold has risen $342.10. So, all of you gold bugs, you gold investors, you're looks like you're making a little bit of money, and some people say it could go all the way up to three thousand this year or more. So um, let's get to the news. Uh, let me take you through this and see if I can find uh, some more uh, information here. This is coming in from War News twenty four seven. Israel trap ceasefire or all out war. Iran's ultimatum. U.S. stifling pressure on. Netanyahu. So these are just some pictures of, I guess, Iranian missiles. Iran delivered an ultimatum to the U.S. demanding the immediate withdrawal of Israeli forces from the Gaza and a ceasefire. In return, Iran will not strike Israel directly, which could lead to a generalized conflict in the region. No one knows yet what Israel's response will be if it happens, if it will be, and is defeat. Benjamin Netanyahu is already receiving fierce attacks from the Israeli analysts and political opponents who are calling for his immediate removal. The withdrawal of Israeli forces from Gaza has angered many Israelis as the objectives of the month-long operation have not been achieved. It is safe to say that Netanyahu's decision to hit the Iranian embassy has sealed the deal. The U.S. is pressuring him to agree. They have mobilized all diplomatic channels so that Iran does not launch an attack, which will open up the Aloian gap in the Middle East. So um, I'm not going to read the entire article. It is very long. But uh, needless to say, uh, Netanyahu has changed course. Um, if I can find the information, um, they will invade uh let me read this here. This is the next article. Time is running backwards in the doomsday bunker. The leadership of Iran uh, for the launch of an attack on Israel. U.S., the Iranian blow is inevitable. So the United States is still saying that uh, Iran will attack Israel in the coming days and weeks. We really don't know when that's going to happen. Israel emergency instructions to citizens. 28 Israeli embassies has been closed around the world. Um, Iran's top military and political leadership have moved into the shelter of crisis. Their doomsday bunker, Eagle 44, as the time for retaliatory attack on Israel is running backwards. The Americans assured the Israelis that Iran will strike, while Israel analysts stress that Benjamin Netanyahu that an Iranian attack is inevitable. The crisis shelter is an underground shelter designed to protect senior Iranian military commanders in the event of a nuclear attack. This shelter is part of Iran's broader strategy to ensure the survival of its leadership in time of war. 
According to some sources, the location of Eagle 44 is unknown, but it is believed to be near the city of Bandar Abbas in southern Iran, while the air base in Ifs Isfahan is known as the Tactical Air Base 8, with several command and operation center centers used by the IRGC force. In Isfahan, uh, there are also underground shelters for the military command of the Iranian guards. According to the New York Times, two Iranian officials have confirmed that Iran has put all of its armed forces on full alert. They also pointed out that Iran has decided to strike Israel directly, this time to strengthen its deterrent. U.S. Central Command, CENTCOM, and U.S. troops across the Middle East have been put on high alert in preparation for a significant retaliatory attack by Iran against Israel, which U.S. officials say could cause a regional war to break out. CNN revealed that a direct strike on Israel by Iran is one of the worst-case scenarios the Biden administration is preparing for and that this could lead to expansion of the war into a wider regional conflict. The U.S. is on high alert and actively preparing for a significant attack by Iran within the next week in response to Monday's Israeli strike on Damascus, a senior official told CNN. Iran has begun to strengthen its air defenses with massive movements of SAM missile systems being detected across the country. So um, let me play this video for you. Uh, let me see if I can enlarge it. So these are just some of the videos coming out of Iran, moving some of its uh, major ballistic missiles out into the open. Um, I did have a longer video. I thought this was the longer video. But uh, it does look like it's going to happen. Uh, we don't really know uh, when that's going to when that's going to uh, happen, folks. But this is the breaking news coming in. Let's just read some more headlines. Um, we got to that one already. We have a report from Pro News that Iskander factory uh, attack in Zaporizhia. Ballistic weapons are changing the war. The use of ballistic missiles in military op operations is critical. Uh, so this is a picture of one of Russia's Iskander missiles. Uh, this is very hard to shoot down, and Russia has uh, been implementing these missile attacks on Ukrainian targets in the last couple of weeks with very deadly uh, accuracy. A Russian 9K-720 Iskander M ballistic missile hit a Ukrainian military drone production plant. In the Zaporizhia region, the missile target appears to have completely destroyed uh, the uh, target after impact. It should be noted that the use of these systems in the conflict between Russia and Ukraine has been decisive in gradually turning the tide in favor of the operations of the Russian army. So this is just one headline. We also have headlines that Chazov Yar is on fire. The Russian army captured Boldanovka and launched a general attack on the fortress city. So right now, Russia in Ukraine is attacking this city, Chazov Yar, uh, they are surrounding it. They are making headway. The 200th Guard Brigade of the Northern Fleet captured Boldenovka in the direction of Bakhmut. After the capture of Ivan uh, Visky, the Russians have flattened the front, and now the situation for the Ukrainians in Chazov Yar is becoming dramatic. So I'm not reading these articles because I only got like 20 minutes left. Uh, so we're just going to do headlines, folks. Uh, there is so much news coming in. Uh, we talked about this about a week ago that uh, Russians uh, have been bombing the Ukrainians with the FAB uh, 1500, and now they are mass producing the three ton monster uh, bomb right here, the FAB 3000. So these bombs will be very effective in eliminating Ukrainian military positions, underground bunkers, factories, railways. Uh, in any other military targets in Ukraine. So let's keep on going. This is also breaking news. Uh, 120,000 Russian troops are being prepared to attack Kharkov or Kharkiv. Uh, this will happen this summer. Uh, they are softening the targets right now. All eyes have been on Kharkiv lately as the Ukrainian front is concerned. 
The Russians, since the terrorist attack in Moscow, has intensified their strikes against energy and military infrastructure throughout the Kharkiv region. Kiev is even worried that it is only a matter of time before the Russians even launch a ground attack, losing the second largest city uh, in Ukraine. Kharkov is under Russian attacks every day and night. We are doing everything to give the city more protection. So um, I do think this is going to happen. I do think that Russia has uh, two major targets, uh, Kharkiv, uh, Odessa, and uh, the Zaporizhia area. They're going to be moving in on them th this summer. This is also breaking news that American military is reporting that China has given Russian military satellite information to hit Ukrainian positions and NATO centers in Ukraine. This information was released today that China is helping Russia target military targets and NATO targets in Ukraine. The U.S. is directly involving China now in the war in Ukraine as according to the U.S. report, Beijing is providing satellite information and photos to the Russian military in order to uh, for them to accurately strike Ukrainian positions in NATO command and weapon centers set up in various parts of Ukrainian regions. So um, I just don't have the time to read the entire article. I will try, will try to leave them in the description box. Um, let's keep on going with the news. Uh, it looks like that Ukraine has attacked the Zaporizhia power plant today. Um, Russia is condemning the attack uh, unfortunately, according to Dmitry Peskov, which is one of Russian's spokesperson, this is, happens all the time. He said attacks by the Ukrainian military against Zaporizhia nuclear power plant are very dangerous provocation, Russian presidential spokesman Dmitry Peskov have told the media. On April 7th, the Ukrainian military launched an unprecedented series of attacks on the Zaporizhia power plant at 11.38 a.m., a strike hit an area adjacent to the canteen, wounding three employees, one of them seriously. So this is happening all the time. You know, uh, a, about a year or so ago, um, everybody was trying to blame Russia for attacking the power plant, but it was actually the Ukrainians who were doing it. So this is more breaking news. The Israeli army is preparing for war with Hezbollah as well. Now, we told you this was going to happen that uh, as soon as Israel finishes off Hamas, they will turn their attention to Hezbollah in southern Lebanon. And I think that is what is happening. A lot of these troops that were withdrawn from Gaza on Sunday, they're being repositioned in the northern border of Israel to get ready to attack Hezbollah. Uh, I think that's the next target of Israel. But uh, with Iran now, uh, looming attack against Israel, that could all change very shortly. So let's go to another uh, headline. Massive Russian strike in Chazov Yar. Ukrainian base was leveled over 100 dead. Reports of Russian paratroopers infiltrating from eastern perimeter into the city. This is just one major headline. Massive bombing, Russian bombing in Odessa, Kharkiv, and Kharkiv, uh, Rye, destroying energy infrastructure, plunging Ukraine into the darkness. So Russia is softening up new battlefields. They're taking out electrical infrastructure. They're bombing railways, military depots, NATO targets. It says all three major cities are key priorities for Russia. And Russia is systematically bombing these targets day in and day out. The Russian forces carried out massive bombings of energy infrastructure in Odessa, Kharkiv and Kirovri, leaving a large part of central Ukraine without electricity. The bombings were carried out using kamikaze drones, Iskander, and uh, ballistic missiles. All three major cities have been methodically and repeatedly targeted by Russia in recent days. So like I said, that is their uh, goal to soften the targets up. There will be a ground invasion coming shortly with a massive amount of troops. And this is just another uh, article on the eclipse that nothing really happened uh, yesterday. Nothing happened, folks. It was just an eclipse. Like I said, we did have one minor earthquake, a 6.0. Um, let's keep on going with some articles. Uh, it does look like that um, Russia has destroyed a Western Supply Sea drone uh, in Ukraine. The Defense Ministry has reported striking a stockpile 
of sea drones used by Kiev to attack Russia, uh, the Russian fleet. We also have breaking news that the U.S. approved 65 F-16 fighter jets for Ukraine. Uh, this has just been approved that about 65 now will be sent to Ukraine. Will it make any difference, folks? I don't know. The Foreign Affairs Committee to the U.S. House of Representatives evaluated a series of notifications during the month of February proposing the transfer of 65 F-16 fight, fighting Falcon fighter jets from Denmark, Norway, and the Netherlands to Ukraine. So that is just one headline. Um, we got so much news coming in. It does look like that P. Diddy is going to prison or probably be suicided, one or the other. Um, Diddy knows too much. Former rival. Knowledge of the little secret room might cost Puffy his life. Sergi Knight has said so. P. Diddy, he's the black version of Jeffrey Epstein. Evidently, he had uh, sex parties in his houses, and he videotaped uh, high-profile uh, actors, uh, musicians, uh, VIPs uh, having sex, I guess, with underage girls. He videotaped that. And according to latest reports, um, this guy right here, P. Diddy, is either going to prison or they're going to schedule a suicide very soon for him because they don't want him talking, folks, because the people that he videotaped are very well-known people, politicians, movie actors, uh, sports stars, uh, you name it. Uh, they, uh, they went to P. Diddy's house, partied, and evidently they, uh, they did something they should not. So this is breaking news. I usually don't cover this news, but since I clicked on the article, uh, we're going to talk about it. Uh, so let's keep on going. Uh, Ukraine claims a major drone strike on a Russian airfield. Okay, we already talked about that the other day. Let me get some more more news here. Um, he says, Iranian attack against Israel is inevitable. A no-fly zone in Iran has now been set up. Netanyahu has rejected the ultimatum and announced a new operation under the weight of an outcry. So all the peace initiatives that have been going on the last couple of days, they're out the window, folks. Uh, Israel has refused uh, any kind of peace initiative, and it does look like that Iran is going to go ahead and attack, and that Israel is going to go ahead and invade the Rafah in Gaza. He said the negotiations between the United States and Iran has collapsed as Benjamin Netanyahu announced late last night that the Israeli army will begin operations in Rafah, stressing that a date has been set. There is also a wreck regarding the hostage release agreement. Hamas said that a few hostages have been left alive, certainly not the number that Israel is asking for. It should be noted that there was a general outcry against Benjamin Netanyahu, for the decision to withdraw Israeli forces from Gaza. Uh, there is no prime minister in Israel who can end the war without destroying Hamas. If Netanyahu does not enter Rafah, that, that will be his downfall. It is impossible for even a prisoner swap deal to lead to the, a different outcome. So um, it does look like that Benjamin Netanyahu did give in to his hardliners. There will be no peace deal. They will invade uh, Rafah. Uh, there's probably going to be a major attack on Israel by Iran in the coming days and weeks. We don't know when that's going to happen, folks, but it doesn't look like that um, that things are getting any better. This is also breaking news. Uh, Biden officials admit that Russia, Russia has reconstituted nearly all the military losses in Ukraine for the last two years. And what this article is saying, that all the people that Russia has lost or been killed or wounded... Russia has replaced them with new recruits um, uh, in the last couple years. So let me see what else we got going. Uh, I'm just clicking through articles here. So this news came out the other day that uh, Ukraine will become part of NATO. Um, U.S. US diplomat said Anthony Blinken. So folks, the world is in a mess. You know, I don't really... Um, I'm really not trying to make fun of of the situation in the world. I, I did a uh, a solar eclipse song, uh, you know, just um, you know, trying to add a little bit of humor today. But there are some very serious issues going on in the world. I mean, we have two major wars now going on: one in Ukraine, one in the Middle East. 
And if by chance Iran does attack Israel directly, then this will be a major escalation. I mean, you know, it's it's fun to uh, to speculate on what's going to happen, you know, um, uh, with the solar eclipse. But the things that we can actually see on the ground, like the war in Ukraine and the war in in uh, in Israel, those are tangible things that we can talk about, and we have information to back up uh, all of these claims. So. That's the major threat right now, folks. The major threat is a major escalation either in Ukraine or in Israel. And that's what we need to uh, be focusing on. Uh, I hope you are still prepping. You know, it really doesn't matter what you prep for. I mean, it could be a hurricane. It could be an earthquake. uh, It could be uh, a drought. Uh, There's a lot of reasons, reasons to prep. But if you do not prepare, folks, then you prepare to fail. You know, it doesn't hurt to have extra food, rice, beans, flashlights, candles uh, at your house. Uh, Keep your car tank, uh, your gas tank filled up with gas. It doesn't help to do those things because there will be some kind of disaster in the future and uh, you just need to be ready. So I did want to take this time to to catch you up on most of the news. By this time, uh, this video uploads, I'm sure that there's going to be more news that we missed. Um, unfortunately, we can't do live chats on our on our program anymore at the moment because our internet is still buffering, folks. I have tried to fix it over the last four months. I've had our internet tech guy from our internet company come out at least three times. They said my system is fine, but then they said that someone is blocking our signal. So no matter how much upload speed I have, my videos are still buffering and the sound is cutting in and out. So I am forced now... Uh, to re, uh, pre-record these videos and then upload them, which sometimes takes hours and hours to get that information to you. So anyway, um, I hope everybody is taking uh, our advice and getting ready. But before we go, I, I want to give you an opportunity because we are living in the end times and terrible things are going to happen. And I want to make sure that if something bad happens that you're going to go to heaven, folks. That's really why we do these videos. We want to lead you to Jesus Christ because that's the most important preparation you can make for your life. Because I don't care if you live to 100 years old, we're all going to die one day, folks. And some people die in their 20s and 30s, teenagers. Uh, There's people all around us at different age levels that are passing away. And unfortunately, many of them don't know Jesus Christ. So I'm going to give you an opportunity right now. Do you know him? If you died today from some unexpected event, do you know you would go to heaven? Well, I'm going to lead you in a prayer right now. In Romans 10, 9, it says that if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with your heart man believes unto righteousness, and with your mouth salvation is made. So, folks, you can get saved by saying a sinner's prayer, no matter what the negative comments are. Our Bible tells us so. The Bible says, all that call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes on him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And that's what Jesus is offering you right now. If you will bow your head, repent of your sins, and ask him to forgive you, he will right now, wherever you are. Just say, dear Jesus. I know that I'm a sinner, Lord, and I ask you right now to forgive me of all of my sins and wash them away with your precious blood. I do believe that you are the Son of God, and I do believe that you died on that cross and you shed your blood for me, and you rose again the third day. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving all of my sins, and thank you, Jesus, for giving me eternal life. Amen. And I want to let you know, folks, God loves you. You know, we're not perfect. The human race is not perfect. And I want to be the first to tell you, folks, I'm not perfect. I make mistakes all the time. Uh, I say things that I shouldn't. Uh, I let a cuss word uh, loose now and then. I'm not perfect, folks. I'm still working out my own salvation. As we all are, we all got other issues. Some people have an alcohol addiction. Other people are on drugs. Some people can't quit cussing. Other people, they can't quit looking at naked women on the internet. They're addicted to pornography, folks. People are dealing with different issues. No one is perfect. But Jesus said, if you believe in him, 
and ask him for forgiveness, he will forgive you for all of those issues and help you get victory over them, folks. But we got to walk in love. You know, there's so much hate in the world. You know, uh, black people hating white people, white people hating black people, uh, Americans hating Russians. Uh, I, I mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, so much hate in the world. And that's why we continue to have all these wars. Instead of loving our brother and, and treating each other with respect, we got people at each other's throats all around the world, folks, different nations fighting each other. I mean, the Palestinians hate the Jews. The Jews hate the Palestinians. The Arabs hate the Jews. The, uh, I mean, it's just all over the world. And the only way it's going to be solved is when Jesus Christ comes back. Until he comes back, we live in a flawed world. We live in a world that people are after each other's throats. But Jesus told us how to act. He said, love one another. If you are a Christian, you will be known for your love, not your hate, not your criticism. You know, Jesus told us to pray for those that despitefully use you. Pray for those people. Pray for your enemies. Do good to them. Do good to your enemies. Bless your enemies, folks. That's what Jesus told us. He also tells us how to pray the Lord's Prayer. And he says, if you do not forgive others, I will not forgive you. You know, if you're a Christian and you have hate in your heart, then you need to ask God to forgive you because hate will not let you enter into heaven. I'm sorry. If you hate somebody, if you hate black people, if you hate white people, if you hate Russians or Chinese or Mexicans or Puerto Ricans, folks, if you hate, God's not going to let you into heaven with that attitude. You're not a Christian. Because a Christian is supposed to love one another. We're supposed to help one another. We're supposed to help the orphan, the widow, the stranger, the people that can't help themselves. We're supposed to be a witness. Jesus told us to take up our cross daily. Take up our cross daily. Why did Jesus say over and over again in the New Testament, if, if, that two-syllable uh, word, if, he said, if you do my commandments, if you follow me, if you abide in me, I will abide in you. If you do my commandments. Jesus did put stipulations on different things, folks. Read your own Bible. It's in there. I'm not making any of this up. But I do want to thank you for watching our channel. So many things are going to be happening in the coming weeks, in the coming months. Um, you know, all of the uh, talk about the solar eclipse, it's a sign, folks. It's a sign from God. The devil comet coming up in just a, a week or two, it's a sign. It's a sign from God. All of these solar eclipses, these blood moons, they're a sign to let us know that we are in the end times. I mean, we have Passover coming up. Passover uh, is when Jesus was killed and buried and he resurrected. That was the Passover time. And that is coming up very, very shortly. So anyway, thank you for watching our channel. Please share our videos out. Um, if you, if you only do one thing in your life, just be kind to people. Just be kind and loving and smile. You know, I, I mean, sometimes it's hard to smile when everything going on around the world. But believe me, there's always somebody in, in a worse situation than you are. There is. There is. No matter what you're going through, there's always somebody in a worse situation, folks. And uh, if you can't give them any financial help, well, just give them a smile. Give them a hug. Give them a handshake. Give them a pat on the back. You know, just make somebody's life better with a smile. So God bless you. We do love you. Thank you for all your prayers. Um, and uh, we'll see you next time. So remember, Jesus Christ loves you. He's coming back soon. Don't be caught dead without him. Bye-bye.